Here we go, episode two, when it comes to TNC Microhydro product, that is our project for 2024. Yes, we're still in 2023, but <laughs> the promotion hasn't ended, so I'm gonna squeeze in another video on this product, and the ticker has the promotion details below. So, what this video will cover is a detailed outline of the list of ingredients contained within the product, and then we're going to cover the orchids that are going to get their first dose. I will explain why I chose these orchids and I will cover the how to apply TNC microhydro for hydroponic culture as well as the wet dry cycle cultivation. I will also add my thoughts on where it may not be as effective and why. However, know that this is the start and my observations are based on my gut feeling which could be proven wrong. Any thoughts to the contrary of what I state coming up? please feel free to clarify, elaborate, or correct in the comments. This is a comprehensive video, so I hope you're settled in. Let's get this beneficial bacteria and fungi party started. Let me introduce the orchids that are going to get their dose of TNC microhydro. The lucky ones, the chosen ones, and why I specifically went with these. Lelia perinii, orchid top orchids, Cymbidium, Phyas tancambillae, Colmenara masai red, slipper orchids, and these seedlings. I will also be applying it to my new Leilonia Joyce Hilton, seeing as she is in bark and will be for the foreseeable future. Wet dry cycle. I'm also going to take a mount, and Dendrobium seraula is the candidate as a mounted orchid. As I go through the content of the product, maybe you can discern and deduce why I specifically chose these orchids. So, let's start with endomycorrhizae. The endo prefix means the mycorrhizae penetrates the plant root cortical cell. Endomycorrhizae are the most common commercially available mycorrhizal type, and eight of those are included in TNC microhydro. Glomus clarum, now called Rhizophagus clarus, has shown to improve nutrient absorption and growth. Glomus intraradesis, was found to be one of the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi that was able to control nutrient uptake amounts by individual hyphae depending on different phosphorus levels in the surrounding medium. Glomus mossae, the inoculation can facilitate the absorption of nutrients by improving the structure of the root system so as to raise photosynthesis efficiency, promote the growth of plants and increase the bioactive components. Glomus deserticola creates a higher resistance of plants to saline stress in orchids, higher mineral content in the tissues, and a higher resistance to attacks of fusarium, and in general, a greater protection against any fungal pathogen. So, without going into the other beneficial fungi in this list, in general, we can deduce that glomus fungi provide numerous benefits to their plant hosts, which include nutrient uptake and disease resistance. That would also include the glomus monosporus, brasilianum, aggregatum, and margareta. Now, ectomycorrhizae. The ecto prefix means the mycorrhizae does not penetrate the plant root cortical cell. However, it does grow between the cells, and seven of those are included in TNC microhydro. In general, ectomycorrhizae can improve the plant's access to resources, affecting plant health and stress tolerance, and basically the species or subspecies included as ingredients in this product each contribute to improving plant health and stress tolerance. You can see all the ectomycorrhizae included in this product on your screen. Now, the trichoderma can not only prevent diseases but also promote plant growth, improve nutrient utilization efficacy, as well as enhances plant resistance to diseases. We have five of those from Trichoderma harmatum all the way through to Trichoderma ricei. And then we have the bacillus, the beneficial bacteria. The whole purpose of initially starting with a beneficial bacteria video. This list includes all the beneficial bacteria that work in harmony to help create a healthy and highly nutritional environment for plant roots. For example, the nitrogen-fixing bacteria Bacillus polymixa, which can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it to ammonia, which can be absorbed by the plant, whereas others can help plants solubilize essential nutrients such as phosphorus. 
In total, we have 13 of these goodie bacillus in our list of ingredients. In addition to all the cocktail of goodies, TNC Microhydro also has seaweed and humic acid included in it. Now, if you're asking yourself why there are so many different variants and strains of beneficial bacteria as well as fungi in TNC Microhydro, seeing as they all pretty much do the same thing, wouldn't it be enough to have one of each and still have the same quality of product? Well, I'm not the manufacturer of this product, but here is my take on that question, should it come up? If we associate the number of ingredients in this product with how many beneficial bacteria are in our gut, then as far as I'm concerned, the more beneficials that are in the product, the more effective it will be able to replicate the normal environment out in nature. Variety is always being the spice of life. If you're still here, thank you so very much. I know that theory can be a bit tedious and in the event that you did not take advantage of the timestamps, instead you chose to stick around during the theoretical part, let me thank you right here and right now. So with all that knowledge, now the reason I chose Lelia Perinii is because she was recently repotted, which equates to stress. She is not a generous root grower either, which equates to whatever the root system she decides to grow on the recent growth, it can do with a lot of help and the possibly viable roots that are still in the pot. Let's see if we cannot help them out as well. Keeping that list of reasons in mind, the next candidates are all the orchids that are in an orchid top. While it is a semi-hydroponic setup, the pots are not sealed off. There is ventilation throughout, and the orchids in these pots do not grow many roots at the same time either. Being that they are bandaceous orchids, with the exception of cousin it, I'm interested to get the nitrogen fixating bacteria into the orchid top pots so that maybe the roots can benefit from that additional assistance. The next grouping I will just group together because they are terrestrial or semi-terrestrial orchids the Cymbidium, the Fias, and all my slipper orchids. While their root growth is not too shabby, some can do with a little bit of help, and being semi-terrestrial, there is a chance that TNC Microhydro will actually work in harmony with that kind of a root system faster than with epiphytic orchids. Seeing as beneficial bacteria and fungi usually are happiest with houseplants and develop naturally within landscapes, I figured that these orchids could possibly show some results based on their DNA, notwithstanding that my Gloria Noggle is the slowest of the slow and could do with a little encouragement when it comes to growing roots a tad faster maybe. I would also like to make my Colmenara a little bit more resistant to the stress of having to live outdoors in low temperatures that are not to her preference. While she can handle the conditions, I would like to support her by giving her some TNC Microhydro to help boost her resilience and reduce the stress of the conditions. And my Leilonia Joyce Hilton, as previously briefly mentioned, is getting the product to help it recover from the stress of shipping and help out with the acclimating process to my current stressful environment this time of year. But I'm not applying it today because the base of the pot is still damp. Once the pot goes dry, being that I'm cultivating her in a wet dry cycle, this orchid will get a soak with TNC Microhydro as well. And then I have chosen this group of seedlings that I've had since 2018. Yep, these are OG seedlings in my collection and so far we have not gotten very far. They are shy on growing roots, shy on getting their structures to grow a little larger and well after all these years I was expecting a little more out of them. For that reason we are going to inoculate their pots with TNC Microhydra as well. Enough of the jibber jabber, I will tell you about my Dendrobium cerraula and my decision making process about her a little bit later on. But now let's get going and actually put the product into the bucket and how we're going to do that. Well, let me show you. First of all, <laughs> let's get into the pack of TNC Microhydro that I received from Topiescape Orchids and check out what kind of consistency we are dealing with. The bag is resealable, which is great, but something tells me that this product is not the kind to absorb humidity as a granulated water-soluble fertilizer would. And oh yes, that looks very powdery and well, 
it reminds me of something I have used in 2023. With the exception, the contents of this bag do not have a musty odor of the sea coming from it. It has a very powdery consistency, so lucky for us, it is not a breezy day. Right out of the gate, if you're planning on using this product, make sure to work with it in an area where there is no wind at all. If you want to get the right amount into your water, that is, and not guesstimate. So as this product is produced in Europe, I'm a little doubtful as to what their measure of one teaspoon equates to. In Europe, we use an actual teaspoon that we would stir a hot beverage with, but in order to show the amount as per the instructions for the US viewers, I have one teaspoon measure with me to see if the quantity fits into that or what adjustments would need to be made. The instructions do not specify a level teaspoon or a heaped one, so I'm gonna go with a slightly heaped one. Besides, it's the first application for my orchid, so if I'm heavy-handed with a slightly heaped spoon, then it cannot be a bad thing. But you can see that the measure does not fit into the teaspoon as per the US value, so I am estimating that what I have here amounts to approximately three quarters of a US teaspoon. Let's get this into some water before I get unlucky and a gust blows my TNC microhydro off the spoon. Seeing as I have quite a few orchids that I will inoculate with this product, I have doubled the quantity to 10 liters and 2 teaspoons of the product. And yes, this is what I thought would happen because the contents of this package reminded me of something I used throughout 2023 for the first time. So what we are seeing here is the dried seaweed ingredient, the Ascophyllum nodosum, turning the water color that strong tea color, but still no odor of the sea coming from the water. That is interesting. And it looks like this needs a good mix. This product is so fine that it holds a surface tension with the water, so it really needs to get agitated to break those smaller clumps down. Mind you, the clumps are not in the package. Rather, the consistency is such a fine grade that they form when added to the water. But one tap breaks the surface tension and everything falls apart nicely. Thank goodness for that. I don't need to put this into a kitchen aid. Just kidding, just kidding. Anyway, now, as with any new product that comes onto the patio, and as I always recommend that we get in and want to use for our orchids, I always check the parts per million, and the water I'm using to start out with has 11 parts per million, as my water is reverse osmosis water. And this is a great parts per million for the amount I put in the bucket. And considering the diverse orchid types I have chosen, I'm happy to keep this concentration. No need to dilute anything here, not right now but maybe in future videos. And then, as with any new product, we're going to test the pH. And after a little while getting to a pH of 9, yeah, that is too high for me. Now, please know that I have orchid roots growing in a pH much, much higher than this, but they are in water only and not media. My media in the pots usually has a pH of 8, so to add this to my pots, I am iffy. I want this to be at least the same pH as what my pots are, so I hope that pH down does not destroy destroy the bacteria and the fungi. Still, I'm going to pH this down to 8 and risk it because at the end of the day, if I'm not certain about a pH of 9 in my pots, there is no way I'm going to test a new product with that high pH unless told otherwise, and then I will update you in future videos. So watch this space, meaning it would be a great time to subscribe to the channel and follow the orchids and how the product performs throughout 2024 while you're in that area of subscribing subscribing to the channel, please also give this video a thumbs up. I truly appreciate the support. Now, as the instructions say to apply this product twice, if it is the first time the pots are being inoculated and within a time span of two weeks between the first and second application, I'm going to soak my pots for 10 minutes. Not all the way to the top, but at least three quarters of the way up the pot to make sure that as much of the product is distributed in the pot and around the roots, as opposed to my relying on the wicking process. Then in two weeks, these pots will get a second application in the reservoir, as I'm growing in a semi-hydroponic setup. If you are cultivating your orchids by way of a wet-dry cycle, then you would need to apply TNC Microhydro once a month to ensure that a healthy colony is maintained throughout on a consistent basis in order for it to be effective. How effective this product will be in my dry climate remains to be seen. 
This wet dry cycle, in my opinion, also applies to the cultivation of orchids on mounts. However, how effective this product will be in my dry climate remains to be seen. Still, while we are in the colder months of the year, I'm going to apply it to the Dendrobium cerraula because this orchid has had at least 70% of its root system decimated earlier in 2023. If this product can stay damp on the mount for longer because of the time of year, it may just serve a purpose for the coming four months before we head into warmer temperatures temperatures again. And that is something my Dendrobium cerraula desperately needs when it comes to getting more nutrients into the orchid by way of the mycorrhizae. Hopefully making this mount their home. The orchid tops will be interesting to see how the product will perform because of how quickly they dry out during the summer. The semi-hydro with the reservoir within the container, I'm flooding those pots as I would do if I were to flush them, allowing excess to drain out. So same thing as prior, I have no concerns about a colony developing in those. When the self-watering pots are done soaking, I will leave the reservoirs filled with the water and TNC microhydros at levels in accordance with the active growth of the orchids, many of them being in active root growth. The reservoir of the slipper orchids will always be topped up because that is how they like it. So with all that being said and done, let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to documenting the ongoings or the lack thereof of these orchids in the coming calendar year and I hope that you will join me for those videos as they are not scheduled for release as per let's say once a month but in accordance to what I can show you when and if it happens, remember to hit the bell icon and select the all option this way you won't miss a video when I post. I appreciate your time watching this video and thank you for it. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.